I'm Andrew Levine, the CEO of Coinos Group, and today we have a really exciting announcement, and it's the release of a developer preview of the Coinos testnet. I recently sat down with one of my co-founders at the Coinos Group and one of the blockchain architects behind Coinos, Steve Gerbino, and in that conversation, we discussed what this developer preview means, why we're so excited about it, and the opportunities that it presents for anyone who wants to get more involved with Coinos. I'm excited because this is the first time that our users or those who are interested in the Coinos project are going to have the chance to see what we've been working on. It's really just a taste of what's to come. But what it is, is the five essential microservices to run the blockchain, to run Coinos. So those microservices would be a block producer, chain service, mempool, block store, P2P, node. Uh, those five microservices are all required to produce blocks, fling blocks over the P2P network, process transactions, etc. So those five microservices are what's being released. But on top of that, they're being released in a neatly packaged Docker container or containerized package. So people will be able to essentially run a Coinos node in, I don't know, two or three commands. They essentially will say like Docker compose up and get a full blown Coinos cluster running on their machine. We made significant efforts to make running a cluster that easy. And I'm excited to share it with you know, the community because I think we've made it very accessible. Uh, it will be insightful for a lot of people who could be interested in producing blocks on mainnet, people who are aspiring blockchain engineers, who would like to get their hands on this product and start using it, tinkering, uh, potentially contributing. Um, I'm, you know, I think we're all excited to have people contribute to coin us, right? Be that be it technical writers or, or developers. Now you have something to have your hands on, run, poke, experiment with, right? Um, I think it could be interesting for, well, definitely would be, I would be interested in, in tinkering with this if I was going to develop a DAP on Coinbase, right? Uh, you would want to run the cluster and even look into how, how would I write a microservice to run my own DAP on Coinbase? This is a great opportunity. You'd, you're essentially the first one in getting the developer preview. Uh, and you can start brainstorming and strategizing of how to be one of the first dApps to launch on the Coinos mainnet, which is something I would, you know, that would be pretty interesting. If, if I wasn't working on Coinos itself, I'd certainly be looking at that end of it. You know, how can I launch, you know, what kind of dApp do I want to launch? A game, something like that. And how can I use this developer preview to prepare to be one of the first ones out of the gate. Being a microservice architecture, it's very compartmentalized. Uh, so it's, I could definitely see it being more bite-sized and easier to chew. You know, you don't have to understand a large monolithic program. You know, like the block store stores blocks, right? So at a very high level, you already understand what that code does. It stores blocks. And that's super simple, right? So now when you're looking at with a when you're looking at this code, having this high level understanding, it's much easier to dive in and, and kind of understand the details within it. And every one of the microservices are similar and that they are very bite-sized, right? They do their job, they do their job well, and that's all they do. And it's, it's designed that way on purpose, right? 
these things are drop in replaceable. You know, you could even, I mean, I could see, I'll speak from experience, you know, when I was taught uh, operating system design, right, in, in college, like I could see a professor basically taking this cluster, removing a microservice and say, this week's assignment is to write a block store for to understand blockchain, right? And you would basically give a student all the pieces, but the but their homework. Give me a block store that makes my blockchain work, right? I, that's how I was taught like operating systems, right? I, I was given a operating system with no memory manager. Write me a mem memory manager, right? And if you've done your homework properly, we'll be able to run programs. And if you, you know, if you fail, then you're gonna, you know, your operating system's gonna crash and burn, right? So that's an interesting use case. You know, that's like an academic view of how I, I, I truly think the Coinos blockchain framework could be used in an academic scenario like that. That's pretty interesting uh, way to learn blockchains. Uh, but but if it's easy enough to for students to take these bite-sized homework approaches, right? You know that says something to how manageable the code base should be in the future, and how accessible and approachable it should be for engineers who are looking to contribute. Which in the end, we want to inspire contributors. We want talented developers to take a look have an opinion, talk about it, propose improvements, right? We wanna inspire people. And I think that this design will foster that inspiration, I hope, right? Yeah, that, that's a great point. Yeah, you can't have accessibility and then have it be complicated and difficult to use and be afraid of it being you know, so accessible that it might seem, um, sophomoric like no it's supposed to be easy like it's supposed to be any developer can come in because it's easy to launch something right the hard part is keeping it going and and growing it and getting more people involved in it yeah um, <clears throat> but the primary purpose here right is testing right we want people kicking the tires mm -hmm. and is it like and that seems like a great opportunity come in, try to break this thing. Um, and by trying to break it and having fun trying to break it, you can actually learn, learn about it, understand it better. And then as we add smart contracts and as we add features to this framework and turn it into a more feature rich blockchain, you will be testing and learning all along the way so that once the mainnet launches, you know it better than anyone else. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously that's what testnet's all about. This is like a little taste before testnet, you know? So you can kind of get a head start and understand where we, we were coming from with our ideas for this. And, you know, it's a, it's a great opportunity for other people in the community to understand what we've been envisioning, uh, test what we have produced, and you know, suggest improvements or find bugs, submit bugs, and um, you know, essentially be prepared for the test net that's coming. Right, you're going to understand the cluster and how it works and you're going to be ready to participate in the in the upcoming test net which will be you know essentially you know a dry run for what mainnet could look like let's be clear about what this is i mean i i i think that there's some pretty exciting kind of firsts here i mean this is a blockchain right it's probably got a bunch of bugs in it um but it's a functional blockchain protocol built on a microservice architecture. We don't know of any, I don't, nobody's ever done that before. That's a huge percent of the work that we've been doing. 
Um, you can write smart contracts on it. It's super hard right now. We're not, we haven't given you great tools for it, but this thing can run smart contracts, right? Um, yeah, absolutely. So it's a functional general purpose blockchain yeah. on microservice architecture. I mean, that's pretty great. I think it's great. Am I missing anything else that it can do? Well, since it could run, you know, general purpose smart contracts, I would say it could pretty much do anything. Right? Somebody asked me, can can they can we demonstrate modular upgradability on on this version uh, of the testnet? Yeah, uh, we we've definitely. I mean, that modular upgradability has been kind of a focal point for us as a team. Like every time we, you know, aspire to do an internal demo, we're like, all right, let's show this upgrade on the fly while the chain is running. It's, a, you know, it's an impressive feat. Uh, so yeah, this, this current release, the de developer preview can certainly be upgraded on the fly, which we will likely um, demonstrate to those who are paying attention. Probably, if you're following Coinos, you'll see us talking about it. And, but yeah, that that feature is already available, built in. That's the whole system call uh, architecture that we have going on. You know, we really need documentation. You know, there's so many cool features. It's just that we haven't gotten the. We're we're really developing it right now, and we have not. We haven't done it justice in writing the documentation for it, but uh, I think it's important to get that out there and uh, it's coming, <laughs> right? Whether you want to test out the, the, the framework or uh, begin thinking about how you're going to run your application or your node, or you want to help us with documentation, this is going to be a big step forward in giving people a, a tool that they can use to gain a, a deeper understanding of Coinos and figure out how they can fit in. Because I think a lot of people are looking for a blockchain to be a part of that they can that they can help um, bring to market. And Coinos is built uh, to to maximize the number of opportunities available to people to participate. Yeah, I 100% agree with that statement. And there's so many ways to contribute, just to name a few. You know, obviously, engineering, uh, technical writers, QA, testing, advocacy, and just spreading the word. You know, some people, some people are like social butterflies. They like, they have a big network. They, you know, tweet out. That helps us. Technical writers, we, we need to write that documentation. I mean, our strategy for development is basically the agile method and you favor working code over documentation. We're very much in the development phase, right? That's why we don't have the documentation that we will have eventually, right? Well, technical writers are those people that can help us with that. And I'm sure there is a lot of aspiring developers out there who want to understand blockchain. They already know how to code. They already have engineering skills, but then they want you want to be a blockchain engineer. This is a great opportunity for somebody like that uh, because you know, you'll have access to people who are developing a blockchain right now. And we are looking for contributions. And if you, you know, if you have those skills, it only benefits the whole ecosystem for us to kind of help help you along. You know, you help us, we help you, right? So there's tons of ways to contribute. I, I really want contributors, so. <laughs> well, and we're not ivory tower douchebags. <laughs> Who think we're better than everyone, right? We're 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 here to talk to people. We're going to be engaging with you, and we're going to be doing our best to help people who are putting in the time and effort to help coin us. We're here. We will, you know, we'll be here to help hold your hand as much as we can. Is that fair? I might not hold your hand, but I will give you my time. Of course, I'm not an ivory tower douchebag for sure. 
we want to make a product bigger than ourselves, right? And we want to grow the community. I, we want the community to own this product. You know what I mean? We all have a vested interest in seeing the success of Coinos. And, you know, when someone puts an effort forward to improve this product, of course, I would love that, you know, and I would want to help that person write that code, get that code into the project, be proud of it, just like I'm proud of all the code I've contributed to it. This is, you know, this will be bigger than all of us. And I always encourage people to get involved, contribute. And yeah, that's exciting. That's what open source is all about, right? I mean, and decentralization. And decentralization, of course. What motivates you to do all this? You know, why are you involved in this project? You know, why do you care so much about this? And why, you know, why do you think other people should care? To put it succinctly, I think that decentralized technology is what the future looks like or at least the future I wanna live in looks like. And I have the technical chops to actually make that a reality. And so I intend to. And part of that is, well, I found like-minded individuals working for Steam. And I think that this is a great opportunity for us to, this is a passion project as well as, you know, an effort to make the future better. And um, yeah, I think blockchain technology has a big place in the future. I think everyone who knows, if you know about Coinos right now, you probably already agree with that statement, right? But that's why, right? The future is bright only if we make it bright. This is, this is how I can help make that happen. And I'm sure there's people out there that can help also. And so, yeah, it's a great project to be a part of.